Luigi is a nice and gentle high schooler, but all his classmates are scared of him because his eyes make him look scary. Since everyone thinks he is a delinquent, he has no friends at school except his friend Kitamura. Luigi also has a crush on his classmate Minori who also treats him nicely. Among Luigi's classmates is Tega, a short girl with a violent temper who knocks him out on his first day for running into her. One day Ryuji accidentally finds Tega's love confession to his friend Kitamura in his bag, so a horrified Tega ambushes him out of embarrassment. Although he is able to calm down Tega with food, she accidentally learns about his crush on Minori. Ryuji then agrees to help Tega with her confession to stop her violence, and he also discovers that Tega lives next door to him as they can see each other from their windows. Ryuji goes over to Tega's apartment which is nicer than his but is in horrible condition because Tega never cleans and cooks. Ryuji can't help but clean her apartment for her as Tega sleeps, and when she wakes up Ryuji feeds her a proper breakfast with his mother Yasuko, but Ryuji finds out that although Tega is short she has a huge appetite. On their way to school the next morning, Minori is surprised to see Tega and Ryuji together and wonders if they are a couple even though Ryuji denies it. Later at school Ryuji and Tega come up with a plan to get Tega and Kitamura paired up during gym class by accidentally injuring Kitamura's actual partner. The Ryuji is uncomfortable with injuring a girl, and the plan fails because he ends up hitting Tega instead. Ryuji then helps Tega try to give cookies to Kitamura but Tega accidentally falls down the stairs and ends up destroying her cookies when she ends up chasing Kitamura. Tega is upset that her gift is ruined and Ryuji feels bad for her so he ends up eating the cookies. Later Minori takes them to the roof of the school and because of all their plans together she misinterprets their friendship for dating. Kitamura, who was also watching them, also thinks they are dating as well and Tega passes out due to their failure. Although Tega appreciates Ryuji eating the cookies, she is upset that everyone seems to be misunderstanding the situation. Tega decides that they need to clear up the misunderstandings and she needs to confess to Kitamura herself, and that after she confesses she will no longer need his help. The next day Ryuji has breakfast with his mother and he starts to miss Tega's presence. But later that day he finds out that she defended his reputation at school, and cleared up the misunderstanding between her and Ryuji. He later watches her confess to Kitamura who gently turns her down and tells her they should be friends. Ryuji then comes out of hiding and promises to support Tega, and she beats him up but is thankful. One day Ryuji and Tega are walking to school, and Ryuji stops to watch Minori play baseball but Tega beats up Ryuji for looking too long at the red-haired girl. Later in class she shows how to decorate cell phones to Tega, and reveals that she has a part-time job decorating cell phones. Ryuji admires Minori so much for her work that Tega becomes grumpy with him, when they eat dinner later that day. They then later see Minori working as a waitress at a dessert restaurant, but Ryuji stares at her a bit too much so Tega pokes his eyes. The next day since his mother passed out, Ryuji takes Tego to go help his mother with work. They run into one of his mother's customers and find him really annoying. But when Ryuji sees that Minori also works at the customer's restaurant he quickly volunteers himself and Tega to work at the restaurant too. Tega is later assigned to do deliveries, but because she doesn't know how to ride a bike she ends up pushing the bike for the deliveries. Left alone with Minori, Ryuji ends up stuck in a storage room with her. Meanwhile while she is out on her deliveries, Tega meets Kitamura who compliments her for learning how to ride a bike. This motivates Tega to really try to learn how to ride the bike, but she gets some injuries in the process. Ryuji and Minori try to stack boxes to find a way to escape the closet, and although the plan fails Tega finds them and is able to save them. Ryuji has kept going to Tega's apartment to help her cook and clean because she lives like a slob. But one day while cleaning he finds blurry pictures of her crush Kitamura, and Tega is bad at taking pictures because she gets too nervous. Ryuji offers to help her take photos of his friend at school, but when they meet Kitamura at school Tega is so nervous she can't act normally. Tega also considers Sumire who leads the student assembly her rival because Kitamura is her second in command, and during assembly the two girls argue at each other. Later Tega feels embarrassed with her behavior in front of Kitamura and she feels sad for the rest of class. Kitamura and Minori later surprise them with a four-way lunch which makes Ryuji and Tega nervous, but they accidentally reveal that Ryuji is making Tega's lunches, and the two become worried that their relationship is misinterpreted again. They finally enact their plan to take pictures of Kitamura while he is playing baseball, but Ryuji sees that the reason why her pictures are always blurry is that Tega is always too excited to take pictures. They later go to a cafe to review the photos which have all ended up blurry. The next morning, Ryuji trains Tega how to cook so she can try to impress Kitamura and she is slowly getting better at cooking. Ryuji later gets his own picture of his crush the next day, when Minori gives him a picture of her eating pudding. But later at school he accidentally reveals to Kitamura that Tega has pictures of him, and Ryuji is shocked to hear from him that he used to have a crush on Tega. 
That night on the roof, Tega explains that when Kitamura confessed to her on the roof years ago she turned him down, but over time she grew to have feelings for him and regretted her decision. During the school holidays Tega and Ryuji go to the restaurant Minori works in to see if she is there, but the red haired girl isn't working that day. Instead they see the famous actress and model Ami. Ami shows up with Kitamura, and he introduces Ami as a former childhood friend. They all decide to eat together and Ami seems to have a kind and clumsy demeanor even though she is a famous actress. But when Kitamura and Ryuji leave the table, Kitamura shows him Ami's true personality is a spoiled princess when people aren't looking, and that she normally puts on a kind act for others. Tega later slaps Ami because the blue-haired girl started to make fun of her fight, and the incident makes Tega angry for the rest of the day, and she hopes to never see Ami again. But they find out the next day that Ami is transferring into their class. Ami's fake personality quickly wins over her classmates to Tega's displeasure. Kitamura speaks to Ryuji and he states that although he doesn't mind Ami's fake personality, he would prefer if his childhood friend would act normally. Later when Ryuji leaves the class for drinks, Ami tries to apologize for the day before. Tega and Minori notice that he is speaking to Ami, and they pass him notes to express their displeasure. At the end of the day Ami meets Tega in the class and makes fun of Tega, as they have become bitter enemies. They argue with each other, and Tega warns Ami that she can't keep up her act in school for long, but Ami reveals that she apologized for the incident at the restaurant and that she has destroyed Tega's friendship with Kitamura. When Tega doesn't appear for dinner that night, Ryuji goes to her apartment to see her upset over Ami's words and Ryuji comforts her saying that Ami has not sabotaged her friendships. And later that night when they buy some snacks, they see Ami hiding from others buying lots of junk food for herself. The next day Minori and Tega try to reveal that Ami eats lots of junk food, and the blue-haired girl draws attention by fake crying. Later on the roof they see a boy with a camera outside the school, and on the way home Ami goes to Ryuji to hide from the boy who is actually a stalker. Ami asks Ryuji for help avoiding the stalker, and Tega offers her apartment for help because it is much higher quality, and more secure than Ryuji's old apartment. Although they are enemies, Tega gives Ami refreshments and the next day Ami reveals that for 6 hours Tega made Ami act out several famous people. Later Tega and Ryuji are approached by Kitamura, who asks Tega if he can help Ami make true friends at the school. Tega agrees and blackmails Ami into having lunch with them. Ami wonders why Tega and Ryuji have the same lunch, so Tega eats Ryuji's lunch. They later join the class in a mission to help clean up the town, and Tega who hoped to work with Kitamura is disappointed to be grouped with Ami. When Tega and Minori separate from them, Ami and Ryuji end up cleaning the river where mud and a toad accidentally reveal Ami's spoiled personality. She tries to hide her fake personality, but Ryuji reveals that he knew the whole time. They later run into her stalker who was the reason why Ami transferred far away to her school, and they watch when the stalker takes pictures of Tega the small girl destroys, threatens him and chases him away. The incident inspires Ami to end her fake personality, and she runs to chase the stalker to beat him up and destroy his camera. Ryuji later congratulates Ami, but Tega accidentally finds them together in his apartment and Tega becomes upset that Ryuji and Ami seem to be growing closer. The school pool is now open and the students are all excited to swim during the hot summer except for Tega. And when the students go shopping for swimsuits, Ami teases Tega by suggesting she wear children's swimsuits. Ami tries to impress Ryuji by picking a fancy swimsuit, but he ignores her to help Tega who can't pick a swimsuit for herself. Tega is depressed the rest of the day, and Ryuji later figures out that Tega hates the pool because she is too small for most swimsuits her age. She is also self-conscious because other students make fun of her small size. The next day Ami uses her charm to impress the other students at the pool, and she starts to tease Tega when she arrives. Tega and Ryuji's plan is to use tricks to make Tega seem bigger to avoid embarrassment which seems to work on the other students. But when students start throwing each other into the pool, Ami picks up Tega and dumps her in the middle of the pool. Ryuji sees that Tega actually can't swim, and is suffering from an equipment malfunction. Ami later apologizes that evening for tossing Tega into the pool, but also makes fun of the small girl not knowing how to swim. Since Ami's apology is half-hearted and she still argues with Tega, Minori arrives and tells them to settle their differences using sports. They choose a random sporting event, but unfortunately for Tega the contest will be a swimming race. Ami states that if she wins she will force Ryuji to hang out with her all summer, leaving Tega to be alone during the holidays. Later in class, Tega and Ryuji find out rumors are spreading throughout the class suggesting that the girls are fighting over Ryuji and Tega becomes upset. Later at the pool, Ryuji tries to help Tega learn how to swim but she is embarrassed with all the other students watching her fail. Ryuji puts Tega on a strict eating and training regime to help her train for the race, but their plans become ruined when it starts to rain. They are encouraged by Kitamira who arrives with tickets to the public pool, who is confident that Tega will win. Later Ryuji meets Ami at the drinking machines and he tells her to stop teasing Tega so much, but she states that she really does want to spend the summer holidays with him. The next day the weather is better and they can practice swimming, and Ryuji finds out that Tega's strength makes her good at swimming and she has a chance at winning. 
But when it suddenly starts raining, Tega becomes angry, and depressed when Ryuji tells her it's okay for her to lose the match, because he can pack frozen food for her during the summer. Tega then leaves saying that he doesn't understand anything, and she doesn't join him for dinner that night. Ryuji's mother then tells him to give Tega some space, and Ryuji later gives Tega some lunch. Soon it is the day of the match and Omi impresses the class with her swimsuit. Tega arrives late to the race but is encouraged by Ryuji's lunch, and during the match Tega sabotages Omi to get a head start in the race. Tega suffers an injury during the race, and Ryuji heads into the pool to help her. But when Ryuji helps Tega he suffers an accident, as well and has to be rescued by the class. The group decide that even though Tega lost the match, they all should go to Ami's beach house for the summer holidays, including Minori and Kitamira. Yuji has a horrible dream where he was ordered around like a dog, and when he wakes up Tega tells him she had a horrible dream where her husband was a dog. The two later leave to meet their friends at the station, and the group are excited to be going to the beach house together so they act strangely. Tega and Ami immediately start arguing so Ryuji asks, them to be kind to each other while on vacation. Tega also starts her plan to help Ryuji and Minori get together by showing Ryuji that Minori is easily scared by horror, and that he can play the role of her protector if she gets frightened during the trip. They eventually make it to Ami's beach house, but when the group go to play on the beach Ryuji finds himself cleaning the house all by himself. Meanwhile, Tega keeps trying to scare Minori while Ami asks Kitamura if he is having trouble with the student council at school. Later Ryuji accidentally walks into Ami in the bathroom, but she was actually just cleaning and teases him. Ryuji later cooks curry for the group but makes it too spicy for everyone except for Minori who loves the spicy curry. After dinner Ami tries to talk to Ryuji but is disappointed when he wants to talk to Minori on the balcony. They end up talking about ghosts, and Minori subtly suggests they cannot be together. Finally that night Tega and Ryuji talk about their plans and are disappointed with the lack of the results. They are then shocked when they find evidence of ghosts and become scared themselves. But the next morning Kitamira tells them that Minori suffered a breakdown the night before due to all the frightening situations. They then trick him into helping him scare Minori. Minori and Ryuji work together to create breakfast for everyone, and they both are good cooks. Ryuji becomes embarrassed when she tells him he will make his future wife happy. While they talk, Ami eavesdrops on them and she later tries to show off to Ryuji and becomes suspicious of what his plans are for Minori. The group spend time on the beach and have lunch, and they persuade Minori to join the group to explore a cavern next to the beach. Kitamura prepared traps ahead of time inside the cavern to scare Minori, but his traps are very basic and plain. Minori still manages to have a breakdown and wants to get out of the cavern as soon as possible. The group become lost and separated, with Ryuji alone with Ami and she tells him that he isn't a good match for Minori. They then hear a scream and find Kitamira with Tega who have found one of Minori's sandals, and believe something had taken her deeper into the cavern. The group then hears voices and whispers throughout the cave, and begin to panic, but it was actually Minori working with Kitamira who were trying to show them how to really scare people. That night they play with fireworks on the beach, and Ryuji is able to speak to Minori who apologizes for scaring him. She asks him what his original plan to scare her was, and Ryuji subtly tries to confess to Minori but she changes the topic. Ryuji, Tega, Minori, Ami, and Kitamira return from summer break and they find their peers excited for the upcoming student festival. Meanwhile their teacher tells them to treasure school festivals, while they are young before they become single 30-year-old public school teachers. Kitamura and Sumaira meet with the rest of the student council to plan the festival, and Sumaira is determined to make it the best one because she will graduating soon. Ryuji observes that in gym class the boys all fawn over Ami and Tega, who are still bitter rivals with each other. The class idiot Koji notices this and asks the guys to work together and vote on a maid cafe for the class. However, although Ryuji is also excited he is worried about Tega's reaction, the boys finally compromise on a cosplay cafe suggested by Kitamira and put their plan into motion. Tega later goes to Ryuji to fix her gym clothes which were broken by Ami while they were fighting in gym class, and although Ryuji tries to ask Minori about their moment together on the beach she brushes him off. After school Tega and Ryuji meet to fix her gym clothes, but she gets a phone call from her father which Tega promptly ignores. Tega feels her father has abandoned her, and refuses to pick up the phone for him. At school the next day the class needs to decide on a candidate for the school beauty pageant. The guys try to elect Ami to represent their class, but she is able to force the responsibility onto Tega, who quickly protests, but agrees when Kitamura asks her. The guys in the class enact their plan to have the class do a cosplay cafe, and the class starts to argue. Then Ori struggles to suggest a haunted house for the class, but is unable to form an effective argument, and the class uses a hidden randomized vote. In the end, a play wrestling competition was decided which was a suggestion from their teacher. After school, Tega's father continues to call her but she keeps ignoring his calls every day. Since she refuses to see him, Ryuji meets with him instead and Tega's father Rikuru buys him some food. He gives him money to give to Tega and questions Ryuji on his relationship with her. Ryuji finds out that Rikuru had divorced Tega's mother and remarried, forcing the family to splinter, 
and Tega had to live on her own. But since he feels regretful, Rikuru would like to live as a family again with Tega. Ryuji tells Tega that her father wants to live with her again, but Tega tells him to stay out of her family business and to leave her alone. The class meets the next day to go over the script for the wrestling play, and Ami quickly becomes the leader of the play due to her popularity while Tega is made to play the antagonist. Tega becomes annoyed that Ami keeps forcing her to play weird roles, and they start fighting in class which is misunderstood by the rest of the class's interest in the play. Kitamura then announces that to make the festival a hit, the student council is offering prizes to classes that have the best events, including coupons to the supermarket which makes Ryuji very interested. When they walk home later that night, Rikuru confronts them but Tega kicks him and runs away. Ryuji argues with Tega calling her childish, and that she should try to hear her father out instead of acting violently. But when they argue Ryuji realizes that he was projecting his insecurity about his absent father onto her. And an understanding Tega reluctantly goes to meet her father. It is soon time for the school festival, and Koji the idiot leads the class in exercises to prepare, while Kitamura works hard on the student council. Ryuji and Tega walk to school one day, and they talk about Tega's father trying to make amends by taking Tega out for dinner and spending time with her. And Ryuji is happy that her father is making an effort. The next day Tega enlists Ryuji's help with a plan of hers. She buys famous macaroons and gives one to Ami asking if she can switch to the lead role in the play so that her father can be impressed with her when he watches the play. Though when Minori hears that Tega's father is coming, she becomes upset and starts calling Rikuru a horrible person. Ryuji angrily leaves the classroom and Ami goes to speak with him. He feels bad for ruining the festival atmosphere, and Ami tells him she'll try to repair the issues. Later that night Ryuji hears from his mother that Tega will be moving, and will no longer be their neighbor, and she was able to speak to Rikuru who is moving Tega out of the apartment. Ryuji becomes conflicted about Tega moving, and when he speaks to her she tells him to apologize and make up with Minori. The next day is the school festival, and Tega scolds Ryuji for overdoing it on the makeup. They start fighting in the changing room until Kitamir arrives announcing the start of the play. The wrestling show becomes an instant hit on campus and soon many students arrive to see the play. Tega and Ryuji play the roles of the villains on stage, but during the play their teacher loses it and tries to interrupt the play, only to be carried off by the class. Minori plays the role of a wise mentor, and the play climaxes with a fight between Tega and Ami, and the crowd loves the performance. The class takes a break before their next iteration of the play and see that a lot of classes ended up making cosplay cafes. Tega also becomes embarrassed spending time with Kitamura and Ryuji. But Tega becomes worried when her father seems to be absent from the festival. And when he doesn't show, Tega never got to play the lead in the play. The class moves on to the pageant, and while Ami helps Tega get ready, Ryuji notices that neither Tega's father nor Minori came to visit Tega during the festival. Ryuji arrives to give a dress he made to Tega for the pageant, and the girls are shocked at his skills, but Tega keeps checking his phone in case her father shows up. Ryuji starts to lose faith in Tega's father and questions how he can make his daughter so disappointed in him. Soon the pageant starts and Ami plays the role of the mic but starts to steal the spotlight from the contestants. While in the crowd, Ryuji gets a text from Tega's father asking if he could tell Tega that he can't come to the festival because he is too busy, and Ryuji feels terrible for bringing Tega's hopes up and projecting his insecurity about his own father on her. Meanwhile on stage, Ami announces Tega's entrance and the crowd is shocked to see Tega in an angelic dress that's very different from her fierce personality. Ami tries to see if Tega's father is in the crowd, but they realize that he never showed up, and an angry and embarrassed Tega rips her dress up. Ryuji and Minori start an applause which makes the crowd start cheering, and Tega takes the mic saying that she beat up her father and the crowd should shut up. She later uses the talent portion of the pageant to hide herself in a bag, and the crowd cheers for her performance. In the end she wins the pageant for her unique presentation. Since she is alone Ryuji tries to run onto stage to comfort her. But Ami suddenly announces a competition for all the boys at the school, an athletics competition where the reward is a date with the winner of the pageant, and all of the council president's notes for future tests. Ryuji becomes determined to win so he can try to cheer Tega up, but some of the other boys sabotage him during the run. Angry at their betrayal, Ryuji starts to beat up the other boys as he runs, and then is able to use them as stepping stones to get past a barrier. Ryuji takes the lead in the race but Minori appears and starts to pass him, and Ryuji realizes that she was a much better friend to Tega than he was. Minori then sabotages two other runners by attacking them with her baseball, and Ryuji and Minori win the race together. Together the friends crown Tega the winner of the pageant and the class celebrates the ending of the festival with a large bonfire. Meanwhile, Sumaira congratulates Kitamira on hosting the festival successfully, and that soon he will be the new student council president when she graduates. Tega, Minori, and Ryuji reconcile with one another and when Tega leaves to go fight Ami, Minori tells Ryuji that Tega's father did the same thing a year ago, pretending to come back into her life, 
and then abandoning Tega again. Tega gets a moment alone with Kitamura where they hold hands at the bonfire, and the rest of the class encourage all of them to dance together to end the festival. The next day Tega and Ryuji discover that the class have become incredibly happy and grateful with Tega for winning so many competitions for their class, and for her role in making the wrestling show so popular with her violent moves. Koji reveals that due to their success, the class has become very popular and Tega's nickname is now the Pontop Tiger of Happiness. Ryuji is happy that the class is more accepting of Tega now, but he still feels bad that her school festival experience was not that happy. They also hear that rumors are spreading about Tega and Kitamura due to their dance at the festival. But at lunch that day, Tega becomes self-conscious due to all the attention she is getting from her classmates, and Kitamura arrives to comfort them about the rumors and let them know that things will return to normal soon. He also compliments Tega for working hard during the festival, and in her embarrassment Tega almost chokes on her food. Later Ryuji sees Ami on the phone when he tries to buy a drink for Tega, and annoyed Ami makes him buy a different drink instead. Tega becomes annoyed that Ryuji bought the wrong drink, when they are confronted by a shy student who wants Tega's help in confessing to a girl she likes. Tired of her classmates' shenanigans she threatens him and he runs away. She then forces them to look at pictures from the school festival, and they see an excited Minori looking to buy many photos taken from the festival. Minori then asks Ryuji what pictures he'd like to keep from the festival, and she gets embarrassed to see that he wanted to buy the picture with the both of them winning the race. Ami later tells Minori that she isn't interested in buying pictures because as a model she gets her picture taken all the time. Ami later sees their teacher who is upset that she's still single, and comforts the older woman who compliments Ami on her maturity. Tega and Ryuji later decide to go eat food together, and the two start arguing about the pictures they bought, and Tega is happy she spent time with Kitamira, while students still try to be close to Tega for good luck. Meanwhile Kitamira and Sumire watch from the student council room, and she tells him that she has something important to say. After school Ami is feeling melancholy with her friends and gets encouragement from them, and she meets Ryuji going shopping at the supermarket. Ami tells him he should hang around Tega for good luck and getting good deals, but Ryuji wonders if anybody is looking out for Tega's happiness. They later walk home after shopping and Ryuji gives Ami some of his groceries, as he noticed that she was looking sad that day. Meanwhile Tega sees Kitamira sadly sitting next to the river, and Tega asks him to get good luck and happiness from her to cheer him up, but he declines. And Tega realizes that something happened between him and Sumire. Later that night at dinner, Ryuji and his mom can tell that something is bothering Tega and try to cheer her up and make her feel part of their family. The next day the class notices that Kitamura seems to be in a bad mood, and is unusually grumpy. Their teacher announces the student council elections and everyone expects that Kitamura will be the new student council president after serving as the vice president for so long. But when the class excitedly nominates him, Kitamura refuses to run and announces angrily that he is quitting the student council. Ryuji and Tega wonder what happened to Kitamura, but Tega is pretty sure something happened between him and Sumire. They then see that Kitamura has gotten into a fight and has dyed his hair blonde. The teachers gather his closest friends to find out what has happened, but Ami notices that Sumire is acting unusually cold and harsh towards Kitamura. Then Ori arrives with Koji who reveals he was the one who bleached Kitamira's hair after he was asked, and the class worry about their representative and debate on what to do. They later watch as Kitamira flees school, and Ryuji overhears Ami claiming that Kitamira is just acting for attention. Lenori gathers Tega and Ryuji to see if they can visit Kitamira after school, but Tega actually wants Kitamira to quit the student council so that he can be far away from Sumire. On the way to Kitamira's house, Ryuji asks Minori if she thinks Ami was too harsh on their friend, and she thinks that the blue-haired girl probably has her reasons and she does secretly care about Kitamira. But they later find that Kitamira is missing from his house, and Ryuji finds him at his own house. Kitamira admits that he ran away from home and asks them to take care of him, and Tega is apprehensive to be close to Kitamira after school. For tonight's dinner Tega volunteers to help cook to try to impress Kitamira but she accidentally messes up the dinner. Kitamira still eats her food because he knows that she's trying to cheer him up. Kitamira later tells them that he really doesn't want to be the student council president, and Tega proclaims that she will support whatever he decides to do next. They then play video games late into the night until Kitamira falls asleep, so Tega and Ryuji walk to get some ice cream. But Tega seems to get doubts as she realizes although Kitamira is now separated from the council, he is likely feeling miserable inside, and she can't help him. She is determined to find out what exactly is troubling their friend, and Ryuji will help her. The next morning Tega is embarrassed that they were all staying over, but their noise wakes up an angry Yasuko who pays them money to leave the apartment. Since they have free time Kitamira suggests, 
They go play baseball, but the friends watch as Kitamira takes out his frustration on hundreds of pitches. Tega tries to cheer him up by learning to play baseball, and Kitamira is shocked that Tega is easily a natural. When they return home, Yasuko asks Ryuji and Tega to hold Kitamira while she fixes his hair, but Kitamira escapes and runs away. Tega and Ryuji later talk, and Tega is certain that Kitamira still secretly wants to be student council president, and they need to do something to motivate him. And the next day, Tega announces her candidacy for student council president to the shock of their class. To get Kitamira to become the next student council president, Tega puts on a show in front of the school that she will ruin everyone's high school life if she were to be elected. Kitamira shows up at school to everyone's surprise. As Tega tries to demonstrate how bad of a student council president she will be by swinging around the mic, the students wish that Kitamira would run for student council president. Later Tega and Ryuji explain to Yuri that it was an effort to get Kitamira to become the president because they think it would fix him. To help the cause, Yuri decides to teach Tega and Ryuji how to use the printer so they can make flyers for Tega's campaign. As days pass by, Tega and Ryuji spread their flyers around the school, but Kitamira didn't do anything. At night Ryuji gets a call from Yuri's, who is a member of the student council. In a hurry, Ryuji leaves the house to find Kitamira. During their conversation, Ryuji learns that Kitamira has a crush on Sumire, the current student council president. Kitamira was going to confess his feelings to Sumire after he gets elected as student president because that way he would earn her approval. Kitamira feels that running for president would be meaningless since Sumire is going to America because she wants to be an astronaut. Ryuji comments that nothing seems to go as planned but he encourages Kitamira. Tega calls for Ryuji and runs towards Ryuji because Tega is worried that he left the house in a hurry. Kitamira sees this and says that he knew that they were trying to get him to become the president and that they care about him. Before Kitamira goes home, he thanks Ryuji and tells Ryuji that he will not continue like this. Tega asks Ryuji what the phone call was about but Ryuji keeps it a secret. The day before the election, Tega threatens the school if anyone doesn't vote for her. Kitamira shows up at school with his hair dyed back. Tega and Ryuji are happy to see Kitamira. Going along with Tega's performance, Kitamira announces that he will lead the student body and the school cheers for him. However, to Ryuji's surprise, he learns from Yuki that Kitamira hasn't turned in his application for student council president yet and the deadline is in 30 minutes. Ryuji rushes to the classroom to question Kitamira about the application, but Kitamira decides he is giving up on running. As they walk home together, Kitamira talks about how he joined the student council. After Tega rejected him, Sumire encouraged him and gave him a position at the student council. Kitamira thinks he had a fun high school life, but he is too scared to step up. Two minutes before the application is due, Kitamira decides to turn in his application and he successfully becomes the student president. During Kitamira's speech in front of the school, Kitamira confesses to Sumire, which surprised everyone. Sumire rejects Kitamira by treating his confession as a joke. Ryuji questions Sumire afterward. Sumire explains that she wanted Kitamira to run for president and not confess to her. Ryuji wanted to continue but Tega stops him because Ryuji should go comfort Kitamira. Although Tega understands that she is not who Kitamira likes, she wants the best for him. Tega proceeds to find Sumire in the classroom and fights her with a wooden sword. As Tega and Sumire trade hits, Tega calls Sumire a coward for hurting Kitamira. Ryuji comes in and stops the fight with the other students. Tega wants Sumire to say that she hates Kitamira if she decides to reject Kitamira. Sumire says that she rejected Kitamira because she knows that if she expresses her feelings to Kitamira, he would follow. Sumire didn't want Kitamira to sacrifice for her. Unknowing to Sumire, Kitamira heard everything she said. Kitamira thanks her for everything, and he is glad that he fell in love with her. After the conflict, Tega is suspended for two weeks. Then Ori finds Tega has Kitamura's picture in her handbook and is uneasy. As Christmas approaches, Tega says she loves Christmas and is looking forward to Santa Claus coming to Japan. Tega asks Ryuji if he has been able to get closer to Min Ori while she was suspended. But since Ryuji hasn't made any progress, Tega offers to help him, calling herself the Angel of Christmas. Later at school, they see that Tega has a lot of fans because she won her fight, and an uncomfortable Tega proclaims victory in front of the students. In their classroom, they see Min Ori acting strange and she has a minor breakdown in class. Later, Kitamira arrives to tell Tega to talk to him instead of taking another challenge. Kitamira has also started a radio show about love confessions and is calling himself the patron saint of broken hearts. At lunch Ami overhears Tega talking about Santa and teases her, and while they argue Kitamira announces a Christmas party for the class. Tega encourages Ryuji to ask Minori to the Christmas party, and Tega will help him. The class elects Tega to help plan the party, and Tega asks Minori to help, but Minori refuses because she was responsible for the softball team losing their recent game, and she needs to practice more. Ami tries to persuade her to go, but Minori continues to refuse. At home Ryuji apologizes to his parrot and co for thinking about making chicken for Christmas, and Tega finds him ridiculous. Tega takes Ryuji to the restaurant Minori works at to ask Minori to change her mind, but Minori isn't there, 
Tega also feels that Minori is now avoiding Ryuji for some reason. They are later joined by Kitamura and their classmates, who want to help Tega and Kitamura get together to cheer up Kitamura ever since Sumire left for America. But Ryuji feels a little uncertain about their help, and his perceptive classmate Maya suggests that Ryuji may have feelings for Tega. It is soon time for the Christmas party, and Tega has been working hard to make the party a success because she is a huge fan of Christmas. Their teacher is happy with Tega's efforts and Ryuji helping Tega to study, but she won't join them for the Christmas party. Tega and Ryuji later see Minori coming out of practice, but Minori quickly returns to her team and avoids them. Tega hopes to make the party so fun that Minori has to come, but she gets upset when she sees Ami helping. Ryuji and Ami are later left alone, and Ryuji admits that he dislikes all their classmates trying to make Kitamura and Tega a couple. Ami teases him, saying he is like a dad trying to protect his daughter and she tells him that he needs to end his strange relationship with Tega, and she secretly hopes to get closer with him. When class ends that day the class prepares to go to the party, but Minori still refuses to go. Ryuji later meets Tega at her apartment to deliver Christmas presents. He learns that when Tega was young, she would volunteer with the nuns at her Catholic school to deliver presents for poor kids to show someone cares for them, and she likes Santa because it feels like someone is watching over her. She remembers when she was a little girl, she met Santa Claus at night but thinks it was likely a dream. The next day the class worked together to prepare the gym for the Christmas party, and Ryuji watches as everyone supports Tega in finishing the decorations for the party. The class set up a giant Christmas tree, but suddenly a softball flies through the window and knocks it over. The horrified Minori tries to apologize and repair the Christmas star as Tega and Ryuji try to comfort her. Ryuji assures that everything is alright. Minori then leaves with her team after fixing the tree, and although Ryuji tries to persuade her, she continues to refuse to go to the party. Ryuji and Tega prepare themselves and dress fancy for the Christmas party with the help of Ryuji's mother. She also gives Ryuji his grandfather's watch. They arrive at school to see many students also waiting for the party to start, and their teacher has arrived to wish them luck. Kitamura is dressed strangely, but announces the start of the Christmas party for the class. The class party and eat food, but Ryuji volunteers to help serve food because he is dissatisfied with the servers. The lights go out, and suddenly Tega and Ami perform Christmas songs together for their class. Minori is alone by herself for Christmas Eve, and although Ryuji calls her to try to persuade her to come one last time, she ignores him. Ryuji later compliments Ami on her singing, and the fact that she and Tega kept their performance a surprise for the class. Ami then tells him that Tega has left the party to try to persuade Minori personally, and she is disappointed when Ryuji continues to worry about Tega. Deciding he has to help, Ryuji leaves the party. Tega has returned to her apartment after failing to persuade Minori to come to the party, and she resigns herself to another Christmas alone. She later hears banging on her window, and sees a costumed bear outside. She calls him Santa and shows him her Christmas tree, and after taking off his head, she thanks Ryuji for cheering her up. Tega then tells him to hurry back to the Christmas party in case Minori changed her mind to go to the party. Ryuji tries to argue and stay with her, but Tega tells him he already gave her a great present by pretending to be Santa, and that her present will be to have him see Minori at the party. But after she forces Ryuji to leave, Tega cries and changes her mind. She tries to chase after him but he has already left, and Minori who was heading to the party sees her sobbing. Ryuji arrives back at the school gate, when Minori arrives and awkwardly rejects him with a riddled answer, and that night everyone spends Christmas alone. The new year has arrived and Tega meets with Kitamura, telling him that Ryuji has gotten sick after the Christmas party. Tega and Ryuji later talk about Minori's rejection, and Tega is certain that Minori has feelings for Ryuji but something is keeping them apart. She announces that she will learn to cook and clean after herself, and not go to his house anymore so she can be more independent, but that Ryuji needs to uncover Minori's true feelings. He later meets his classmate who lent him the bear costume, who found the present Ryuji never gave still in it from the Christmas party. The class is celebrating an upcoming trip to Okinawa, and when Ryuji sees Minori he is unable to say anything to her, and runs away. Their teacher announces that the Okinawa trip is cancelled because their hotel burned down, and they will be going on a ski trip instead. The class is very upset that their beach trip is cancelled, Kitamura later approaches Ryuji and senses he is in a bad mood, but Ryuji brushes him off. Ryuji later sees Ami and Tega together in the city, and is surprised to see the two enemies have started to get along. At a cafe, Tega tells Ami that Minori rejected Ryuji on Christmas Eve but Tega is certain that Minori still has feelings for Ryuji, so she wants to use the ski trip to discover Minori's true feelings. Ami wishes them good luck, but subtly tells Ryuji that he wasn't the only one hurt on Christmas Eve. Ryuji later thanks Tega for helping him with Minori, and she tells him to believe in himself. The next morning, Tega manipulates a situation to get Minori and Ryuji alone together, and after an uncomfortable start the two start to talk normally. Ami is unhappy to see them enter school together. In class Kitamir announces the groups for the trip and they have to make a guide on what they want to do during the trip. 
Their trip group meets at Tega's house to make the guide and everyone is impressed with Tega's place, where Minori is surprised to see how clean it is thanks to Ryuji. Ryuji later finds out that Minori hasn't visited Tega in over a year because she was trying to give her friend some space. Minori admits to Ryuji that she is happy for this trip, as it will be the last big event for the class to be together before they all graduate. Ryuji becomes encouraged to use this trip to find out Minori's feelings, as he too feels that their time together as classmates will be ending. And on the way to the mountains, Ryuji is determined to try to confess to Minori one last time. The class have fun at the ski lodge learning how to ski, but Tega refuses to learn and decides to go sled instead even though Ryuji suggests she get Kitamura to teach her. Ryuji feels that Tega seems to be acting strange around Kitamura, and Tega tells him that she had drinks with Kitamura while Ryuji was sick with the flu. Meanwhile, their class gets into an argument because they want to prevent Maya from getting close to Kitamura, and the class are working to get Tega and Kitamura together. Ami thinks they are all idiots. Meanwhile, Ryuji is disappointed that after one day at the ski lodge he hasn't been able to talk to Minori to understand her feelings. She notices him leaving the dining hall himself and goes to meet him, and she tells him she wants to resolve an argument with their classmates so that everybody leaves the ski lodge happy. Minori also feels that Tega's feelings for Kitamura are not that strong, and Minori shows him a hair clip that Tega gave to her. As Ryuji talks with Minori, he feels that it will be impossible to understand her feelings and confess to her again. A depressed Ryuji wants to stay in his room, but the other guys in his class try to cheer him up, and he explains that Minori rejected him on Christmas Eve. The guys decide to help Ryuji and they head to the girl's room, but find it empty. Suddenly Tega appears and the guys have to hide in the closet. But when the other girls appear Ryuji accidentally takes Tega into the closet as well. The girls gossip together and Ami reveals to the other girls that Minori rejected Ryuji over Christmas. Minori tells Ami that it's none of her business. But Ami feels that Minori feels guilty about what she did, and the two get into a fight. The girls eventually leave, and the boys don't understand what happened. Tega and the boys agree to never speak about what they heard. The next day Ryuji sees Ami playing in the snow, and Ami reveals she had an argument with Minori and she feels guilty trying to figure out what the other girl is thinking. Tega and Minori arrive on a sled and knock Ami over, and Ami accuses them of hitting her on purpose. The two restart their argument and they fight each other. During the fight Minori loses her hair clip and Tega goes to find it, but she gets lost and stuck in a blizzard. Minori, Ryuji, and Kitamura work together to try to find Tega when they become worried for her, and Ryuji finds Tega on the hill badly injured. He carries her back, but a confused Tega thinks he is Kitamura and confesses that she has feelings for Ryuji. The class returns from their trip, and Ryuji can only think about Tega's accidental confession during the trip. He accidentally wakes up during class saying Tega's name, and the rest of the class cover for him. Tega has not been going to school since the accident, when her mother picked her up from the ski lodge to take her away. Ryuji then meets with Kitamura, and asks him to pretend to be the one who saved Tega to avoid the accidental confession. Later the boys go to a ramen shop together to talk about their lives after high school, and they see Minori working there. After eating at the ramen shop, Ryuji walks past Tega's old place and wonders how she is doing at her mom's house. At home he talks to his mom about his future after high school, but is uncertain if he can afford university. His mother Yasuko tells him to try his best, and that everything will be alright. The next day Ryuji discovers that Minori has become the new captain of the team, and when Ami arrives later to head to her thinking spot near the vending machines, Minori tells her that her favorite spot is haunted. Minori also tries to tell Ami that she understands her feelings now. Meanwhile, Ryuji argues with his teacher about his career plan, because he isn't able to afford higher education, and he discovers that night that Yasuko has picked up another job to try to help their finances. Tega later arrives and Ryuji wonders where she had been while she hits him repeatedly. Ryuji tries to offer her food but she refuses while they play with Inko the parrot. Tega later asks him if he was able to discover Minori's feelings, and she assures him that everything will work out between him and Minori. Tega later leaves to go to his apartment through his window, and before she leaves Tega asks him if it was Kitamura that saved her from the blizzard, and Ryuji assures her that it really was Kitamura that night. The class is happy that Tega has returned to class, but their teacher is concerned that Ryuji still does not plan to go university, and that Tega seems uninterested in a career path because she is from a rich family. She understands their choices, but asks them to think carefully about their future. Tega reveals that she has no idea what to do in the future, because she barely has an idea of what to do now. She then admits that she wants to discover love first. Niji later finds Ami arguing with the school admins, and after she storms out, he follows her and she reveals that she had refused to model for the school. 
Ami also reveals that she was originally supposed to transfer a while ago, but she stayed at their school to help Tega. Ryuji then gets a call that Yasuko is sick, so he takes over her jobs to support the family. Tega tries to prevent him from overworking, but he feels pressured to support his mother because of his family's struggling finances. Tega then helps him work his mother's shift at the bakery where they sell Valentine's Day candy. While selling candy they meet their classmates who seem to be concerned about their love lives as well. Tega then calls Ami to come and help them sell the chocolates because Ami is famous, and after getting recognized Ami helps them sell lots of chocolates. That night Tega makes her own chocolate so that the next day she can give homemade chocolate to Ami, Minori, Ryuji, and Kitamura. Tega thanks Kitamura for rescuing her in the blizzard, and Minori realizes that the boys are lying to Tega. Ryuji pretends he didn't hear her confession, and Minori angrily confronts him. She reveals that Ryuji was the one to save Tega, and Minori tries to get Tega to admit her true feelings. Tega refuses, but Minori tells her that as her best friend, Tega should care about her own feelings first and Tega runs away. Minori and Ryuji decide to chase after her. They try to chase down Tega before she can leave the school. And Minori tries to apologize to Tega that she did have feelings for Ryuji but she knows that Tega has feelings for him and she wants her best friend to be happy. But they don't make it to Tega in time and Tega runs away. Since Minori fell while they were chasing her, Ryuji takes Minori to the nurse's office. Minori tells him that after high school she wants to play softball professionally because her brother used to play, and although softball has been difficult the struggle has given her the determination to make her keep going. She reveals that she knows he tried to give her a present for Christmas Eve and that she couldn't accept it, and she cheers him on to pursue his own happiness. He later finds Tega at their shift at the local bakery, and Tega tells him that she heard Minori confess her feelings, but she wants to talk to him only after they are finished with their shift. After working at the bakery, they meet Yasuko and Tega's mother who becomes angry that Tega ran away. Yasuko also becomes angry that Ryuji is working after promising to focus on studying and preparing for university, but Ryuji argues that he can't ignore the family's dire finances. Ryuji exchanges harsh words with Yasuko, and Tega takes him to run away. They run to a bridge and Tega reveals she ran away because her mother has a new husband and another child, and Tega doesn't feel like she fits in with the new family. She feels the same with her father, so she feels like she doesn't have a family. Ryuji tells her that he feels guilty of robbing his mother Yasuko's freedom, because she had to support him as a single mother from a young age. When Ryuji starts to feel depressed, Tega tells him that she will be by his side, but she accidentally pushes him off the bridge. Ryuji tells her that he wants to run away with Tega when they finish school, and before he can fully confess to her Tega interrupts him by jumping into the river. They later get a call from Kitamura who is worried about them and was contacted by their parents. They meet at Ami's house where Ami, Minori, and Kitamura take care of them, and Ami gets Ryuji to admit that he is in love with Tega. Ryuji and Tega announce their plan to elope together after two months, but Ami calls their plan foolish, and that they need to think about their future. Their friends don't agree with their decision, but they each give their own support to Tega and Ryuji. Tega and Ryuji later leave with Kitamura, and Ami comforts Minori who starts crying after their friends leave. Tega and Ryuji return back to their homes to prepare what they need to run away, but Ryuji finds his mother Yasuko has run away herself, and has left him a note telling him to go to his grandparents' house. The next day the class discovers that Tega and Ryuji ran away earlier, and did not show up to school, and instead of eloping they have decided to go to Ryuji's grandparents' house. At his grandparents, Ryuji introduces himself, and Tega as his future bride. Yasuko arrives at Ryuji's grandparents' house, who are her parents Seiji and Sunoko, and they tell her that she raised Ryuji well. Tega and Ryuji were able to lure Yasuko to the house by faking a voicemail, and bringing the family together allowed Yasuko to reconcile with her parents. That night, Yasuko reveals that Ryuji's father abandoned her while she was pregnant, and that everyone told her not to keep the baby to protect her future. But Yasuko was determined to keep her baby so she ran away, and raised Ryuji alone. She also tells Ryuji she was scared that he would drift apart from her as he grows up, and Ryuji comforts her. Tega and Ryuji are later embarrassed to share a room together, since they told his grandparents they want to get married in the future. And that night Tega revealed she always knew running away wouldn't work, but she wanted to dream a little. Ryuji wonders if they can still keep their families close by and still share a future together, and that night they share their first kisses. The next morning Ryuji, Tega, and Yasuko return back to their home city. Tega then returns to her apartment after missing several calls from her mother. She feels like she needs to fix her life before she can be married to Ryuji, and she leaves a note for him and leaves her apartment. The next day their teacher Yuri tells the class that Tega has transferred away from their high school, but she wishes their class the best. The class is concerned with Tega and all text her at once. Then Ori and Kitamura try to comfort Ryuji, who had found Tega's note at her apartment, and Ryuji wants to give Tega some space and respect her wishes. Tega later sends a text of the night sky with a star to everyone in the class, and Minori who understands Tega the best, tells the class that Tega is hoping they will be happy experiencing the same night sky together with her. 
The class are inspired by Tega and they take a class photo together to send to Tega, wishing her luck. One year later, the class has their graduation ceremony with all of them pursuing futures after high school. And after the ceremony, Ryuji goes to his classroom to find Tega hiding in the locker and he tells her that he loves her. And this is all for this video, make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.